Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for checking out this video here on Show Style and Spirit. As you can see from the title of this video, I'm going to be giving my commentary on two interviews that came out today. One on Destiny's YouTube channel with DJ Richie Sky, and one with Dr. Heavenly, the part two of their discussion on Dr. Heavenly's YouTube channel. And that was some ghetto mess, okay? But And I'm going to give my commentary on why I think it was ghetto. Just give me a few moments, okay? So before we get into these sound bites, I ask that you please hit the like button on this video. Then YouTube will recommend this video to more people who enjoy discussing the various topics surrounding love and marriage Huntsville. And if you have not already done so, please subscribe to Show Style and Spirit. I would definitely love to have you as one of the showstoppers. All right. And everything that I'm saying is alleged and just my opinion. And the Copyright Act of 1976 says that my fair use commentary on these sound bites are allowed for criticism. Okay, so we are going to start off with Destiny speaking with DJ Richie Sky. It's a part of her segment called Big D Convos. And in this sound bite that really stood out to me, Destiny tried to use Sunny as her excuse for all of the seasons past where she did not really share her world with us. She did not give storylines. She seemed very guarded, uh, hard to read. And whenever she would have conversation with someone in a scene or in interviews, you ended up having more questions than clarity. So I want to go ahead and get into their conversation where they try to blame Sunny uh, for her lack of storyline. I definitely feel lighter um, because I, I'm, I've always been a person, even though I do have very private elements to myself, I've always been a person that I feel is open. Like, I'll be talking to strangers and telling them all my business. And, <laughs> um, but I feel like when you come into the reality world and you have some certain experiences, it's, it's hard not to be guarded. Yeah. It's very hard not to be guarded. And in that space, I a lot of things that I was going through, I wish that I was able to show what I had, what I was going through after the divorce that didn't even include my ex-husband. Yeah. But that wasn't a story that was told and that wasn't really, you know, a part. It wasn't on my behalf. It was the way that the story was being told in the love and marriage hustle world. And so, yeah. Um, did I answer your question? Yes. <laughs> Do you just... Does Sunny is Sunny to blame for any of that? And I'm not. And that's not a not towards her, but in making the connection that she was a part of telling your story, right? Um, now that we know that, what do you look back and wonder if maybe your story was not being told? I do actually. I do, and I, I, I made this point too, and even in the conversations that we had in this last episode, we had a whole drag down about production. Of course, it didn't make it because I think it was like two fourth wall, two yeah, yeah. fourth wall. But I was saying like, you know, were you always like, like, like I snake me? I don't know what other word to, to call it, but because I didn't become difficult or storyline-less until she became my producer. I feel like reality TV, you, you, you've been in reality TV, everybody has moments of difficulty in tug of wars with, you know, production, but I really, I was like, man, was this a set? Okay, Destiny, first of all, why would you know about production having an opinion of you that you are hard to produce? Why would anybody have that circle back around to you unless they just really didn't give a fuck about keeping their job or, you know, you reporting them to Carlos or whoever their immediate supervisor was or HR, you know, if you found that to be inappropriate, how would you know that you have a rep amongst production as being hard to produce? You know, I think this is total bull. What I think is taking place is Carlos realized that Destiny is trying to create a platform on YouTube. She's going live a couple times a week, one with her therapist, AKA life coach. You know, they, um, 
the the lady said this week that she is a therapist operating as a life coach, but whatever, a uh, mental health professional life coach. She goes live with her and then she does this big D convo segment. I'm convinced that by this week's big D convos, Carlos King asked DJ Richie Sky to join Destiny on this platform and he did some pre-producing. Because why would DJ Richie Sky lead in with a question, you know, you're not really sharing with us, is that due to Sunny? Because Sunny and Destiny have said that, you know, she only worked there um, for one season. Destiny has tried to make it seem like Sunny was fired, like let go. And then Sunny has made it seem like she was contractual. And I'm inclined to believe Sunny. It was contractual for her to work one year, one season, and that was it. But Destiny, we've seen her since season one of Love and Marriage Huntsville. So how could Sunny be the take the blame for her being so guarded on a reality TV show for five seasons when Sunny was only involved for one? So whoever came up with that uh, narrative, that was like really goofy, a big F up in my opinion, because Sunny just got involved for one season and not for all the remaining seasons that Destiny was on the show. Also, I think that it's really jacked up to blame a producer. I get that you don't like her because she married your ex-man, but Destiny, why suddenly you want to blame Sonny for your lack of storyline when we've been saying this about you for years and then you would come out and say, you know, um, according to the divorce decree, you could not say much on the show about LeBaric and the marriage you know, and for whatever other, oh, you wanted to protect your son, you know, you, for whatever reason, I guess you don't want him to grow up later and watch the show and hear what you would say about him. But now it's sunny, you know, just stick to one narrative, it's, you know, be consistent. But now I just feel like you're just guarded on a reality TV show because of your attitude. That's what I think it is. So now let's go ahead and move on to part two of Dr. Heavenly's interview with Destiny. Okay, so I feel like this was another idea of Carlos. I said this in my last video, the Caddy interview. I will link that um, at the end of this video so you can just click on it and check it out if you have not already seen it. That paper that you see in Dr. Heavenly's hand, it has the questions typed out. The questions are worded in ways that Dr. Heavenly does not speak. So when she would read the questions to Destiny, it was extremely choppy. It did not flow. Dr. Heavenly struggled and she is a doggone dentist. She has more education than I do. And she was struggling to read the questions. And Destiny was like, what kind of question is that? And I'm going to play that sound bite. But um, it just gives Dr. Heavenly totally was not involved in the production for this interview. She did not come up with these questions. I already felt like in part one, she really wants to interview Moses. I think Dr. Heavenly may have a little crush, but... Um, it was definitely someone else. I know that in years past for her YouTube channel, Oliver Twix has produced for Dr. Heavenly, allegedly, but I just have a feeling that this was all Carlos and it did not flow at all. He should have at least just given Dr. Heavenly an outline of questions so that she could put it in her own words because it just came off ghetto. And then it was weird. There would be times where they would be looking down. In part one, I figured Dr. Heavenly had her cue cards, you know, like her flashcards to remind herself of things to say. But in part two, it was really weird. Like almost like someone was down on their knees or sitting in Indian style looking up at them. It was strange, ghetto. But I definitely think that Carlos had his hand in this interview with Destiny. So let's go ahead and talk about uh, this next soundbite. 
And it's one of the weird questions. One of them is Dr. Heavenly asks Destiny if Melody was wrong for checking Marceau for his hashtag free Martel. To go off on uh, Marceau for a text he sent her saying free Martel. This is a definitely display because we, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, one of the things I would I would have to challenge the audience to see is that everybody on this show is attached to Martel first. Everybody. Mm. So stop trying to make people choose. Mm. Mm. Okay. Does that make sense? It does. It does. It does. It does. If people want to be neutral, like I tried to be, let them be neutral. Yeah, you know Martel well. He's the type of man that does well with a with platonic friendships of the opposite sex. Is he the type to do well with a platonic relationship? What kind of bullshit? <laughs> <laughs> Don't be asking these goddamn questions. Don't you do this? We're not supposed to be cut. Don't make me cuss. I'm probably the only, I'm not, I can't say that because I don't really know his history, but I think we've been this friend, friends as long because there's never been that, right? And Martel can't hold water. Don't you think you would have told somebody by now? I, 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 you know what? Martel probably is a really good friend. Probably not a great, great like, husband. You know what I'm saying? I mean, for me, based on what we've seen, outside of the cheating, I, I saw him be a good husband. I saw him be a good father. I mean, but you know, you know what it means for sure, for sure. Father, you know what I'm saying? Because I think that like, the cheating made him not. Yeah, of you know, course. So, of course, but there, you know, everybody had their ups and downs, but the choices you make make you good or bad in a certain arena. So, for me, for me, for me. So, I agree with that. So, I, never, I always got on to him about his choices. Always. Because you were male's friend. And I was his friend, and I'm going to hold my friends accountable. Both of them. Is he the type to be disrespectful? Because I'm gonna say, we I went with Carlos and we did a whole thing and me and him had a blow up. But to me, for me, I felt like he was never disrespectful. I felt like we went there, but he was always you and Carlos went there. Me and Martel. Oh, okay, got you. So you and okay, I didn't know, but yeah, I've never experienced that. And if I say something like we had a little tisk, and I said, uh, uh-uh, uh, you need to apologize. That's you went too far. Isn't it? I'm sorry. Yeah, what I'm saying, that's how my dad got it. Like, to me, even if he does, you know, everybody makes mistakes. He just seems like a generally, you know what I mean, um, guy that's, I mean, you know, I'm not his wife, so, you know, that's probably a deeper something. Mm-hmm. But he's never been really just disrespectful, in my opinion. You know what I'm saying? I've never experienced that either. Okay, so another example of how this is definitely pre-produced by Carlos, because now Dr. Heavenly is trying to say that Martel is like a good guy. Hi, Kimmy. And, um, you know, she's saying, I don't think he's ever been disrespectful. But Dr. Heavenly, I remember when you interviewed Martel, and after a while, you couldn't take it of him speaking down on Melody, and you just started shouting, you arrogant. So, Dr. Heavenly, why the change in opinion now? Is it because you're friends with Carlos, who's friends with Martel? So, therefore, now you're friendly with Martel? I'm not going to say friends with, you're friendly with Martel. And you're going to say he's never been disrespectful. And then you start it off with whether or not um, Melody was wrong for checking Marceau for the hashtag free Martel. And Destiny, what is up with you saying the whole cast was connected to him first? That has absolutely nothing to do with right from wrong. It's wrong to try and carry out revenge P against someone because you're mad at them that you two have broken up or you're mad at them because now you don't make the same money that you used to or you're mad at them because you're really mad at yourself, you can't launch revenge P against anyone for any reason. And how dare you, Destiny, especially when every chance you get, you like to say as a survivor of DV, as a survivor of abuse. So it's okay for you to advocate for yourself, but for Melody, it's, well, you know, and everyone was connected to Martel first. You know what? Also, Destiny, for you to say everyone knew him first, 
when you go back to seasons one and two, Melody was the one who was always trying to extend the olive branch and try to uh, make up with the Scots. And it was Martell who wasn't checking for them. He did not want to go to any events where they would be in attendance. And he kept up the division. So I just find that funny how everyone, they're so quick to come against Melody when she was the peacemaker when Martell wanted to keep up hell. So now let's talk about Wanda. So this really threw me for a loop. It's one thing when you're watching an interview and obviously you do not know the questions that will be asked, but for Dr. Heavenly to say very often, she even said it in this part two, that she does not fully watch Love and Marriage Huntsville. Thanks to Instagram, you can watch several clips of any show and you pretty much watch the gist of the episode, but she has admitted to not really fully being committed to watching Love and Marriage Huntsville, but yet she has such an interesting opinion when it comes to Wanda. Some of the mothers on the show, what is it like interacting with the mother? Now, I love Miss Wanda Carlos Carlos. If you hear anything I say, bring Miss Wanda back. Okay, I love Miss Wanda the potatoes. I need to get a potato. Anything she can do. I got a season too. Order a season. I, I want a potato. It's Wanda season. Um, I, I love Miss Wanda. Mm -hmm. She done went up on some bloggers for me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I love Miss Wanda. Um, I love Stormy's mama. What's her name? Miss Betty. Miss Betty. Miss yeah, Betty. Mm -hmm. Betty is so real. She was like, you know what? I always like you on the show, but I don't like you now. Mm -hmm. If you didn't do a chair and got into a my daughter. You threw a chair and Did that happen already? Shit. <laughs> <laughs> they had cut that part out. Okay. Um, okay. So what happened was, um, that was a dance for something, Mom. There was a bike in your hair care store. Outside, I need to talk about that a little bit because um, first love, the first big love and marriage husband brawl was at your hair care store. Uh, there were multiple arguments. I remember y'all went live. There was a lot going on. Uh, and uh, under the magnifying glass from that day, uh, what was that like? What happened? First of all, what the hell happened? What was it a bubble? What the fuck? Like <laughs> it started out crazy. It's so funny because. I had to produce that is on the show now. Um, okay. That was like, What's the name again? I don't remember. Uh, putting the, the her. event together, not her. Not her. <laughs> <laughs> Put the event together. And I just, I remember getting there and I was so upset because I'm like, where is, where is the event? Like, where is the, the step repeat? The book? Like, all of these things. But anyway, now that I look back at this, what I was getting. But, um, it was just the energy was just first of all stormy showed up and that was right after the, the incident where i talked about the that's what's up incident mm -hmm. so i hadn't seen and me and melody had a moment tisha had a moment it was tisha showed up at sneakers it was it was a galatine's was tisha my soul wife oh, yeah. yeah yeah um she showed up at sneakers like she was ready to fight she said i heard y'all talking about me y'all been looking for me here i go tisha okay She's one of his daughter. I had to remind people of that. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so we had that. And so I hadn't seen these ladies since that event. And so when Stormy came, at the time, I was so close off to being receptive, right? So she, she came and brought a Gucci bag and some flowers and all that other stuff. But I was just looking at her like, what? Those are you doing? Yeah. Oh, well, Stormy's a classy lady. In that moment, I wasn't saying that. Right. At the moment, I was like, I ain't seen you. Mm -hmm. I ain't seen you. Mm -hmm. Since uh, Galentine's, and so I, 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 I kind of was like, "What is this?" Because these are people that I didn't invite. They tried to, you know, put, push it as it was a, a, a what was it, a, a, a public event, mm -hmm. right? So then Melody walks in, and the way that she walked in, it was just she was on live, not then. Oh, uh, but it, it was just in my mind in that moment. I'm like, "Why are y'all here? Like, y'all are not really here to celebrate me." So I mean, she was, and. Uh, it went from that to the parking lot, confront Miss Wanda, to the guy, you know, Martell trying to protect Melody, and to the guys, like, having their little, and it just escalated. It was just a mess. Mm -hmm. Even my daddy, when my dad went off, which went on camera, everybody cleared, because it was like, my dad is an even kill, he's a sweetheart, big heart, and it was like, y'all disrespecting my daughter's business, y'all got to get 
they out of here. It was a lot. 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 Did y'all peep that, how that was done? It starts off with Dr. Heavenly saying that she loves Wanda and Carlos. If you do anything that I say, you need to bring Wanda back to the show. I feel like this is a premonition, a foreshadow for Wanda to return season eight of Love and Marriage Huntsville. He has already teen up the ball for Wanda to return back. Also, Dr. Heavenly went from saying how she loves Wanda, she needs to come back, to saying, I want to talk about the fight that happened at your establishment. Destiny said that Melody was confronting Wanda and Martel felt like he needed to protect Melody. She was making it seem like the entire brawl was due to Melody. Well, we all know why Melody had to step up to Wanda because Wanda was questioning the paternity of Sugar Mama. Very inappropriate and unfair to Sugar Mama, who is a child and cannot defend herself against an adult. So Melody was right in her confronting Wanda. Wanda took things to a physical level when she tried to sucker punch Melody. And that is when the men got involved. And we know that allegedly Maurice sucker punched Martel as well. But they really tried to go from putting Wanda up on a pedestal to saying that, you know, Melody was confronting her and that led to the brawl. I don't like the semantics and the games as if we did not see the episode. That is the footage that they showed us all. And Melody was live on Instagram, I remember watching. So they really tried to spin things as if we have no memory, as if there is no footage. But I feel like Carlos, he is just really laying it on thick with using his friends who are also bloggers to interview certain people and say certain things to um, make anyone who comes after Melody appear in a very positive light and to try and make Melody look in a negative light. And Dr. Heavenly is right on board. I just don't get it. Oh my gosh. But I wanted to definitely share these sound bites with you. These are the ones that stuck out to me, and um, I wanted to give my commentary on them. I hope that you all had a fantastic day. I hope that it was a wonderful Wednesday. It was a wonderful uh, working Wednesday, definitely busy. I'm just so thankful that we've made it through the majority of the work week. Tomorrow will be a thriving Thursday. Take a few minutes out to prepare yourself for tomorrow to have a smooth morning, a smooth ride into work. Don't forget to set your alarms. I use my cell phone, so they're always set. Lay your clothes out tonight if you go into the office. Make your overnight oats or you know prepare for your lunch. Whatever you can do for a few minutes. And you can listen to your favorite YouTube videos while you do that. And then if you need to de-stress after the day, you can say a prayer, you can journal, or you can DM one of your closest friends whom you know will really read the message and actually give you some feedback. Definitely do that. Take advantage of your village. They love you. Thank you so much for checking out this video. Please hit the like button on this video as it is a free way of supporting the channel. And please subscribe to Show Style and Spirit if you have not already done so. And I will talk with you all very soon. Bye.